Yeah, I'm just in here getting a break. I'm just getting my stuff from last night's shift. Oh yeah, it should be on the, the table there over beside the box. Yeah, that stuff came in this morning. I'm not really sure what's in it. Yeah, I think that's a diary um, of someone's. Oh. If you want it, take it with you. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, work away. I probably wouldn't sell anyway. Oh, okay. Thank you. See you later. Don't bother. See you later. To the magpie, my first love. I remember the first time I saw you. I was seven. My father just bought a boat, a little rowboat to fish. Eyes were filled with curiosity, prying into Mother Nature's arms, revealing all of her riches. The trees, the fields in the distance, the people along the bank, and the birds. Oh, the birds. Sparrows, gulls, ravens, curlews, the lot. But you, you stood out on the bench alone. You sparked my juvenile mind's passion for understanding the world, so I watched you. You stood there every single day. My fascination grew with every passing day. I fell in love with you. Your iridescent feathers of blue shone at me, enticing me to study you with a passion to learn your ways. Your ties to good luck and fortune, your high intelligence, how you take everything in, the poem dedicated to you alone in sorrow. Like my first love throughout the years, you've always been in the back of my mind, wondering where you'd been, what position you are in now, and if you remember me as vividly as I remember. To Maggie, my soulmate, I met you at 15, while selling the fish. Your beauty came upon me like a gentle fragrance, being considered to only come to me and not brew a storm of jealousy through the public. Long locks and deep brown eyes to entrance. You looked ever so soft. If I were to understand the obtruse world of the mosaic life of love, you would be the first sight of love and the mate of my soul, all from the first glimpse. June 1968, pretty Polly in the Ritz. I was able to get just enough shillings for the first day for us, and a couple of fruit salads too. The film injected venom into me, turning me into a loather of romantic films. Unrealistic, impractical, unattainable. But you, Maggie, you were entranced covering your eyes with red colored glasses. From that moment I knew I would have to compromise. When I looked into your eyes, it felt like the whole universe was looking back at me, the reflection of a man you could make me. Every time we gazed into each other's eyes, a sense of everlasting bliss fills up my veins. It felt as if I wasn't alive until you, opening a new world. You were the one. Four years later we were married, locked in. Like rebellious teenagers we snuck out of the reception to the lock. And there he was, my first love. And yet, with another at last, connected to me with an invisible red string. I recall to you about my love, and you let me keep my obsession with them alive, collecting little trinkets for our home. The attitude. After endless attempts, two became three, and three became four. We fished, told our antidotes, and had multiple coffees. And as quickly as they came, they left the nest, back to two. Then you, my love, Changed, frail, feverish, feeble, declining down the hill to the endless paradise you deserve, perfectly imperfect. Two became one, alone again. A crater of pain dragged me in, emptiness now. Your laugh, your tears, moments we cherished, lost forever. Light is gone, darkness reigns, now in pieces, infinitely in pain. My wife, my partner, my soulmate. Whilst going past Granny's is when I see it. It was Gilby's in our day. The mural, a portal to you, window to your soul. I was pulled up from the crater to see the spark of your life through the painting. 
I spoke to you through the mural beside the past. Shoe menders we home. Tell you what is new with our kids, your animals and the town. It was made for your spirit to stay forever. Hidden beauty of the town, just like you always have been. To Enniskill, my special love. You were the most important love of it all. You gave me my two other loves. For that, I will always love you unconditionally. You gave me a home, laughter and love. And yet, I let you become a reflection of myself, beastly and barren. Disrespected you for no reason except pure selfishness and ignorance. I am sorry, old friend. You are uniquely beautiful. A kind soul filled with hundreds of years of history. Ancient castles, lands of green, and a lock so pretty. I'm grateful that I've known you for so long. I got to see you grow, expand, and adjust for the younger generation to enjoy, whilst keeping it familiar for us mature folk. Painted in endless murals, you are different than the rest. Alluring me to learn, receive your secrets, take it all in, island town, exclusive to locals. In a constant progress of alerting yourself for others. You created writers and poets, actors and musicians, shaping the future as I write. When there is a distance between us, I anticipate my return to the grasp of your fingertips. I know I don't have long left on top of the soil with you. I try to embrace myself with your features sitting at your lock. Angelic looks, nature, wildlife, shops, people, a combination that wouldn't work anywhere else. You are breathtaking. So thank you, Enniskill. Thank you for being the love that always stayed. <laughs>